this is uncharted territory for us England fans. I said to my son, who uh, has only known two semi-finals now in, in major tournaments, that um, this is very, very different to what my childhood was like watching, uh, watching England. Um, <clears throat> and I, I think that this generation of England fans are being spoiled with a team who were very, very comfortable on Saturday night against, admittedly, a, a very average Ukraine side who were just happy to be in the quarterfinals. Uh, I don't think you want to get too carried away in terms of the, the performance or the result beating a side like Ukraine. Um, but perhaps actually on the performance you do because the organisation, the control that we applied um, was fantastic. Ukraine were a little bit out on their feet early doors. I think they, it took the wind out of their sails conceding so early. Um, they were obviously a bit depleted bodies wise, wise, a bit depleted in terms of their physical conditioning after the extra time against Sweden. But you can't take anything away from an England team that scored four goals, kept a clean sheet, dominated the game, dominated all the areas of the park. I think we gave up probably one chance uh, or one one even dangerous situation in the early part of, uh, no, sorry, the back end of the, the first half, um, Mason Mount made a crucial block after Zinchenko had combined really well through the midfield area down that left channel. Um, and then straight after making that block, Mason Mount, alert as ever, quickly made another block. And that was the only time that I thought England looked anywhere near conceding in the whole of 90 odd minutes. So whoever you play against, if, if you have a performance like that, I think you, you're going to take a lot of heart from it. Uh, <clears throat> I thought Jaden Sancho was superb. Um, he makes things happen on the ball. He looks a bit physically, a little bit bigger and a little bit more ready than perhaps when he first burst on the scene. Um, his pressing was really good against the ball. Uh, I thought he you know, kept Zinchenko quiet um, as part of a, of a unit that, that, that functioned really well, obviously. Um, but you've got to remember he's up against one of the players of the tournament so far and a player who's had a great season for Man City towards the end of the season particularly. And uh, yeah, he just Sancho's the intelligence of his press, the way he, he bend his runs a little bit when he was applying pressure and his physical intensity um, was too much for, um, for Zinchenko and for Ukraine to handle. And like I say, he created chances 1v1. Uh, I, I, I loved it. It was refreshing to see another attacking player when you've got Mount Sancho and Sterling there in a three rather than just having a two, one either side of Kane. We were able to link through midfield. We, we actually we cut in and, and worked across the line a couple of times um, with with great effect. Uh, and we just looked a little bit more fluid at, from an attacking point of view. But I think Sancho gave Southgate a lot to think about because while Saka, um, Grealish, Foden, goodness me, how many players have we got at our disposal? But what, what all of those players offer something, uh, I thought Sancho was excellent and um, not just with the ball, but against the ball. Uh, so celebrating those moments, as Southgate said, is really, really important. He said after the, after the, the, the game in an interview with um, the Euro podcast with the BBC that the, the team now recognises the key moments that perhaps could go against them if they didn't win those moments. And they, they've learned to celebrate, they've recognised, they recognise those moments and they celebrate them and they actively seek those key moments. So it's okay to set off from a tactical point of view, whatever your shape is, whatever the opponent's strengths are, you're trying to nullify their strengths, you're playing a certain way to stop them getting at you and, and, and set up the right platform for you to be able to launch your own attacks. But sometimes players have to, in the moment, do certain things that are almost instinctive as, as an addition to the tactical plan. And those instinctive things like Mason Mount did there, because he was tracking really deep into the into his own half. To recognise that moment was a really important moment. Ukraine score there, it's 1-1 and doubt starts to creep in. The momentum maybe starts to shift in the game. So the belief in the Ukraine team starts to grow. What happens then? Well, England aren't allowing that to happen because we are recognising and celebrating those key moments. You know, John Stone's obviously making defensive blocks. I think there's been a few of those where, you know, you can see the defenders celebrating a bit like the Italian defenders have done. Um, but but it's not just that. It's also the key moments when we, you know, we have a we have, we have a moment where we play through the pitch very quickly, or Jaden Sancho or Sterling or any of our attacking players create something. Then it's important clearly to Southgate and this team that those moments are, uh, are recognised by the players around but also afterwards when they, when they reflect on the game and think about how they prepare for the next game. Um, I'll just talk about the strength in depth just very quickly. The Denmark game on Wednesday, we have got so many options. I mean, you, 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 you look at it and you say, right, well, we bring Trippier in, we bring Chilwell in, we bring Foden, 
we bring Sacco, we bring Grealish, we bring Henderson. I mean, we, we could almost name another full 11 players uh, that probably wouldn't weaken the team. It's definitely seven or eight options where, in my opinion, you could make a very valid case to, to change it and still have a stronger unit. Uh, my Spanish friends here are now really taking England seriously. They didn't take them as seriously at the start of the tournament, particularly with some of the performances because we lacked fluidity. But what I'm I'm getting, and I'm talking about really experienced football people here, with you know UEFA Pro licenses and stuff, they're, they're telling me that this England team is frightening in terms of the strength and depth off the bench. You know, if you compare Belgium, even France, Spain, their benches with what we have in terms of options that could come in and rotate for for the players that we've got that have performed so well in the last last few games. It's frightening and the rest of the world respects them. But these options aren't weakening the team. If anything, they're, they're either at the same level or they're, they're strengthening the team. And that's great reflection on England, on the state of you know the talent pool in English football. Great reflection on the way Gareth Southgate has managed this group and developed a group of players all to move to, 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 to elevate them all at the same time. Uh, and it's, it's incredibly encouraging going into these next two games. Or hopefully it'll be the next two games. Um, but the first first job, obviously, is to get past Denmark. Denmark are a very good side, much more fluent, much better side than Ukraine, in my opinion. They'll ask many different questions. Tactically, I'm not sure that Southgate will stick with the four. I think he's more likely to go to three at the back with, with four across the midfield and and play you know three up top again or, or Kane with one either side. And that means that you take out the role of Mount in the, in the central or the advanced central midfield kind of number 10 area, which for me, I don't like. Um, but it doesn't really matter what I, what I like and what I don't like. Um, I think if we've learned anything over the course of this last few weeks it's to, to look at Gareth Southgate and his decisions and, and have confidence that the guy and his backroom staff really understand all of the different situations that they've got at hand and that all of their decisions have pretty much paid off so far. So they, um, they're doing an outstanding job. Uh, <clears throat> I think if you look at the likes of um, Jordan Henderson as a potential to come into the team for that leadership. I think that's a, you know, that's got to be one of the considerations that Southgate has. You know, in the key moments, do you need a leader like Henderson on the pitch? I don't know because for me, Declan Rice was the man of the match the other day. I, I thought he was that good, um, and he kind of came out of, you know, he's been six and six and seven out of ten. I thought he was an eight out of ten the other night, and he really grew into the game. He's just that little bit quicker decision making in possession and reading situations to arrive to win balls that he put, people would have thought he had no right to win. Perhaps a couple of games ago he would have, he would have waited and sat and defended space but he had that assurance to just stride in, break up play and he just looked he looked like a top, top player the other night. Um, but every player performed extremely well. I mean, you know, I've said a lot about Harry Kane. I don't believe that he's anywhere near the top of his form at the moment. I don't believe his contribution between the, the two penalty areas is, um, is good enough. I don't think he contributes enough to our overall attacking play. But he scored three goals in the last two games. And we are now starting to serve the kind of deliveries into the box, particularly as the game opens up um, and with the changes that Southgate's made that give him an opportunity to get on the score sheet, give him an opportunity to get a, a little bit more spring in his step, a little bit more confidence, a little bit more optimism, a little bit more buzz about him. And his body language is starting to develop a little bit. And perhaps Southgate is just like he's done with everything else. He's just managing the whole process superbly and, and knows that he's, he's gradually coming to the boil at the right time in the tournament because we will need him. If the ball breaks in the 90th minute on Wednesday night and it's, a, it's a, we're 1-0 up or 1-0 down or, or it's 0-0, uh, I probably wouldn't want it to fall to anyone other than Harry Kane in, in and around the penalty area, and you know I, I, that's not me going back on saying that I think hey, Kane is is playing well because I don't I don't think he's anywhere near where he should be at the moment, but he's deadly around the penalty area and he, he's as deadly as anyone in world football, so that gives everyone confidence as well. It's it's all, all the stars are aligning. I think we've been very lucky in some respects, the way that it's all aligned, the way the opponents have have kind of prepared for games or the the pathway that they've had to the games against England. Um, but here we are. Uh, so we're now in a position where I think the only question that hasn't been answered by this England team is what happens when we go 1-0 down or if we concede a goal and we go behind. Um, we haven't had that experience yet. Do we do we deflate a little bit? Do we lose, men do lose the mentality and lose the positivity? Do we lose the confidence? Does it start to drain a little bit? Does the mental fatigue kick in? Look back to the Croatia semi-final in the World Cup. As soon as Perisic scored that, that equaliser, 
we seem to just drop 10% in terms of the momentum, in terms of the speed of the attacking play, the intensity of the defensive work, the organisation, we just seem to seem to drop off. Southgate has managed this group and had the luxury to be able to manage this group in some respects with the way it's panned out superbly and I would say that the conditioning of all of our players is so much better than it was two years or three years ago in the World Cup. But you're getting towards the end of a long season and the end of a long tournament and, and all it takes is a couple of swings in momentum to go against you to really test whether or not England are, are, have got what it takes to get over the line and win a major tournament and we're going to find that out in the next couple of games because I, 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 sorry, I keep saying the next couple of games that's really presumptuous and I've got to stop doing that because Denmark are a very good side and if we don't defend well against their fluent attacking play and their, their quite direct at times play, their pace up top um, then we could find ourselves in a difficult situation. But that's the one question mark. What happens when England go behind? What's the response? Does it change the mentality? Does it change what we do? Are we able to stand up to that challenge? And that's the only question that I think this team's got left to answer because apart from that, they have been superb. So credit to Southgate, credit to the players, get behind the boys. What a great summer they should turn out to be.